up in the back country today knife testing specifically the SE PR4 <laughs> The blade on this is a 1095 carbon steel and if you're familiar with SE's 1095, I find it fantastic. It holds an extremely good edge and more importantly is it sharpens up really well. Now I haven't confirmed that on this one, I'm going to have to take that home and sharpen it, put an edge back on it. But with all my other knives, SE knives that are this size and bigger around this, their 1095 is fantastic. I love how it sharpens up. From the factory, this thing came razor sharp. It could pop hairs right off the arm. Blade length is about four inches. Now you do have, it's a black oxide coating. Some might say this is a, not the prettiest knife out there, but to be quite honest with you, for me, it's got a certain charm to it that I really like. Um, I love the coloration on the handle, handle scales mixed with that black oxide. I really like that. And I've said this before in other knife reviews, I love this, um, I don't know what you call this scalloped version of the handle scales. We'll get to those in a minute and how they function though. So back to the blade. Spine here, 90 degrees, that's specifically meant for your ferro rods and throwing sparks off your ferro rods. The one thing to note about a 90 degree spine, and you can't have you can't have it both ways, is that if you do have a nice 90 degree spine, which this is, when and you're using this um, offside hand, when you're putting that thumb on it to, to do little cuts, you're gonna notice that it's a 90 degree spine. Now, when I'm doing those type of cuts, I'm not bearing down, they're just, it's more to these small little cuts when I'm doing certain notches or things like that. And so it, it's not an issue. For me, it's nice to have that 90 degree so that you can get your nice uh, sparks off your ferro rod. Spear point on this blade is aptly chosen. For what the blade is for, it's a camp knife. That's really its, its purpose in life. That's what it was built ground up to be. I haven't used a lot of spear points in the past. I've used some. This one, I think just with the overall size of the knife, I really like how it works. When I was doing the notches, I just found that the spear point, because the point comes much further down, is you can really get into those notches and get them cleaned up. Now, you might sacrifice a little belly doing that by not pulling that blade up, or the point, up a little bit. I don't find it uh, to be that bad at all. I really like the spear point and how this knife is intended to be used. Now, one of my pet peeves about blades in general is this portion down here, the very, very bottom portion of the blade. This will be ground really nice, and then this part gets really thick. This one is done right. So certain companies do it well, certain companies don't. SE is one of those that tends to do it well. It maintains its same thickness down to here, so you have a same blade thickness, and it doesn't make sharpening a pain. Or what you'll notice is from about here up, you'll get a really sharp blade, but you can never really get this, this bottom portion. Well, that's why, it's because it's thicker. The grind on this, again, it's kind of, it's just so dirty right now, it's hard to tell. <clears throat> It's, it's, a, it's a high saber grind. Uh, maybe you can see it better on this side. The line right here, you can see it, but I'd almost call this a flat grind. It's very thin stock. It's very thin stock, so it's gonna make it great for food processing. But um, a high saber grind, but there's just not much of an angle there that I've seen on other knives with saber grinds. It's almost a flat ground knife, very close to. Now, despite it being a thin knife, one thing that the spear point offers is you can see the tip is very robust. And in a knife like this, I, I, it needs to be because people are gonna be doing a lot of bow, rivet, bow divots, drilling in like this, those type of things. But as I've been batoning out here in this type of weather, uh, that tip is held up fine. I've been really hammering on it. Now, moving back to those handle scales. Handle scales is a micarta. Love the coloration on these things. 
you might think, well, gosh, that those are that's ergonomically not going to be friendly at all. It is ergonomically friendly from the scallop perspective. The micarta, the micarta is a little bit more slick than maybe, uh, and I'm I gotta use that word carefully than what you're used to on other micartas because it's a polished, but it's still grippy enough, and. With these, it adds a lot of grip. I have not noticed that to be an issue at all out here. Um, in the snow, using gloves, not using gloves. I really like the handle scales and how they grip the hand. You do have a little bit of a finger guard right here. You guys know I love finger choils. This does not have one, but like other knives, I can choke up close enough to the first portion of the blade that it doesn't need a finger choil. The one thing I will notice that I have noticed is overall the, the whole blade is quite thin. So if you like your big broomstick handles, um, you may not like this blade because it's so thin. I like broomstick handles, but I also like the thin blades. Um, they both have strength and weak weaknesses. You just learn to, to work with what the blade gives you. The handle scales, the way they, they're they ground with the, the spine or with the tang all the way around, it's a very, very nice transition. Um, that's one of the things I look for is kind of that extra quality that companies will put into their their blades is to make sure that these match up sometimes they don't and they're just it's unsightly to me and it just I don't know I don't like it this one is done very well lanyard hole in the back I wouldn't call it a generous size but you're certainly going to be able to fit some paracord through there the overall design and weight of the knife makes it work well in many different type of knife grips of course you've got a standard knife grip sometimes when you're doing delicate work and you're pinching up like this for example, what I find is the way the handle scales are, see it has this little shelf right here? It has that on both sides, is it acts as kind of an anchor to suck that knife back in and get a little better grip on it. Likewise, gripping up like this, if you need to get into something and you need to get a little bit more control, uh, the blade feels really nice in hand. So where I'm notching out <clears throat> on this piece is right under a knot. So I'm kind of having to bear down a little bit. And I do notice that on the spine of the blade, or the spine of the handle, I should say, that it does create a little bit of a hot spot. Um, nothing to write home about, but enough that it's mentionable. I'm not worried about it. The edge retention. So I've been out here processing a lot of wood. I did some feather sticks. Uh, I've been batoning a lot of wood because it's so wet out here. I got to get to the inner dry stuff to help to help the fire i made a bunch of notches over here this this little guy right here it's actually going to be a picture frame when i get home i'll lash it all together and then i can put a picture in it but uh the edge retention again if you're familiar with uh se's 1095 is fantastic i really have been impressed with it uh with the many blades that i own from se especially this type of size that just works wonderfully there's a look at the sheath nice leather sheath which i actually love again with this type of of uh, blade when it's meant for i i just like the way it looks uh, certainly you can get a kydex made for it but get a loop design you can see there's a little bit of play so it's a big loop it's going to fit a lot probably every belt out there the one thing i did notice when i first got it it was really really tight that I have since, uh, with the blade going in and out, it's loosened up on me to where it's a good fit and it fits tight. It's not as tight as it was. And getting the blade out, I do have to be a little bit conscious to, if I just pull it, it, it kind of wants to stick. So I gotta make sure I, I suck in a little bit close to my body and try to pull it out as parallel as I can. But, Retention is nice, carries nice, but now you're hiking around all day with it and, and haven't even noticed. So that sometimes a, it's a two stage almost to, re, to uh, remove the knife. It goes in great. The sheath overall is very well built. 
It's a very uh, simple design, I think, but it's very classy looking. I love the way this sheath looks. It's well built. Stitches are great. Price this blade out, and it was about 120 bucks is what it's going to run you, give or take, depending on where you get it. Um, Essie did send this to me for review, and uh, this is just a first impressions. Okay, guys, this, I, I'm always very clear with that, a first impressions based on my use out here right now. The one thing about reviewing knives, as long as I have, though, is you can pretty get pretty much get a really good feel on a first impression especially on a trip like this where you're just using a ton to process a bunch of wood cut a bunch of notches all that kind of good stuff so i would definitely recommend this blade um, i think a fun future video would be a comparison against the se4 and the pr4 that would be an interesting showdown i think but uh, yeah, overall, I'm really impressed with the knife based on my use out here today. Great edge retention, overall great ergonomics. Did have that one little hot spot up there. Nothing for me to, to worry about, to be honest with you. And the blade, as far as it looks, has its own charm, at least to me. I love that reddish color with the black blade. Um, so yeah, like this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed that review. Thanks for watching. We'll see you.